Today we have Maestro Malyaban Chatterjee from Calcutta. Welcome, Dee. Namaskar. Hello. Namaskar. And uh, Malyaban Dee will be giving his insight and expertise on Prabhan and how it has evolved um, over the centuries through the different styles of classical vocal through uh, Drupad and uh, Damar and Kial and how it is transformed into the way it is sung today. So just to, uh, this is the second of our three interviews with the artists. The first interview, we covered the background of the artists and their journey, musical journey, and an insight into what Prabhant is. And uh, basically Prabhant was in vogue, which is a Prabhant is an enclosed type of singing. Uh, very systematic and has precise elements, which we'll discuss in more detail, and uh, and then with demonstrations, so which will help everyone understand profound elements in the form they are sung today. So that's the aim of the interview today: is to find out how these elements have been transformed and what they sound like today, so we get a better practical understanding uh, of what they are and how they are uh, performed. So welcome, Malibanji. Hello, Namaskar. And how is it there in Calcutta? Oh, it's uh, the winter is uh, coming and the uh, weather is very nice. And especially for the musicians, the, fest uh, the music festivals will be starting soon. So we are oh, very great. excited. Great. That's really good news because it's been so quiet for the last year and a half or two years. And so that's it really is. good news. It is. It is. Great. So as this is our second interview, uh, could you just give us a, a very brief introduction to your uh, grana, who you are, and where you are, your grana, and your style of vocal, please? Yeah, I came from uh, from the start of my uh, learning and training and talim. What do you say? It's from the Kirana Gharana. And you know, Kirana is, uh, the Gharana is started by Ustad. Uh, Abdul Karim Khan Sahib. and uh, they have uh, two wings of Kirana Kirana. So basically, we come from I, I, my uh, my uh, training started from a senior Muslim disciple of Pandit Naran Rav Joshi. Uh, so basically, it's from Thubli, the Thubli style. And uh, later on, I started, uh, uh, I got the intensive training of, from Pandit Manas Chakraborty. Uh, there have the other versions of this Gharana, but uh, we can say that it's more about the Kirana style. And uh, there have the other nuances, as you know, it's very difficult to maintain a single Gharana nowadays. So uh, the other influences like the Khurja and the Jaipur Agra are there. So uh, that is what we received from our Guru. Great. And so um, obviously you mentioned Garana. Could we just have a very brief introduction to what a Garana is, just for our new listeners? Yeah, Garana, the, the word Garana is coming from Ghar. Ghar means a room. In the ancient times, they have the uh, difficulties of traveling that have the difficulties of uh, going here and there easily. So on that period, they have the different ghars. The, the ghar means the style of singing. Like in Jaipur, they have a particular style of singing, which is, which is coming from a particular ghar. As you say, it is a gharana. And from Kirana, it is a ghar. It is a style of gharana. And in Delhi and in Agra, so uh, it, it is actually a style of singing and uh, some, uh, some stalwarts and the inventor of these karanas used to, used to make this, this style. And uh, this is all about the karana. Nowadays, we can, see, we can say that uh, instead of keeping a, a, a karana, we should be very, uh, very generous about the karana because we can hear and listen a lot of music so we can think about the good things of each and every gharana. And uh, so there have no limitations actually. So keeping a, a particular gharana, we can imbibe the other good things from different gharana. 
great. I mean, that's a great approach to have a, a very open and free uh, attitude to absorb, you know, the good elements from all the different Absolutely. dharanas to in, enhance one's own singing. It is. And um, which was not possible in the old times, I believe, to yeah. adapt other styles. So this is a good thing for today's musicians. Um, but if we go back in time, if we go back to the Praban, and then we'll go through the different uh, periods and how the Praban, the guy, changed and uh, how it transformed, because it, as we established in the last interview, that it is actually still existing, but in a new form. It so is. if we could go back and just uh, mention how the, what the elements of Praband are, uh, how they are sung and how they are put together to form a Praband composition, and then we can move forward in how, how they're transformed. So we'll go back to Prabandha, which was basically, we discovered that it actually is before the 15th century. We initially thought it was from the 15th when Drupad came to existence, but actually it existed for a thousand years before that, at least. So we're going back to like, you know, the second or third century there. And, uh, and actually the earliest recorded history is from, from the Vedas, which is 2500 BC. So if we can go through the elements of Prabhant, the six elements were Sur, the note, Virud, the words, Pad, the measurements of uh, the, the uh, stances, Tenak, the syllables used, Pad, the uh, drum percussion syllables used, and Thal, the rhythmic cycle. So if we could go through each one, and if you could give your experts, uh, expertise on these. So these are the six elements. So the swar is what basically, and how is it constructed in a form of a scale? Yeah. Uh, basically, uh, nowadays we are uh, taking the scale system and the beat system from the Western music. But we have, uh, in uh, 1905, uh, uh, as the Vatkandiji structured our music, the North Indian classical music, it is, we, we can know uh, through the document documents that we have 12 notes. Uh, from there, uh, seven are the regular notes, which is the sooth notes we used to say. And there have the five notes, kamal notes, which in the Western music, it is called the flat notes. So all together, it is uh, 12 notes. Our music, uh, both, uh, as you know, our music is divided in two streams. One is the South Indian classical music and one is the North Indian classical music. Both the music are based on these uh, 12 notes and thousands and thousands of ragas and different hearts are based only on these 12 notes. So we have 12 swars. Okay, and uh, actually, uh, just to pick up on a point, just slightly diverting to what, um, when you say north and south, both systems have 12 notes. It is. Yeah, and could we um, know more about how did this divide happen, the north and the south? When did it happen and why? Uh, because uh, India is a big country and some of, <laughs> some of the people used to stay there in the South Indian, South Indian music group they have their own culture. And some of the people from the Northeast, North and the, and the East zone, so they have their own type of music. So that's why it is divided um, uh, by some people. Though there have some uh, differences because uh, in South Indian music, they have uh, 72 tarts, tarts in the structure. And in Indian music, we have only 12 tarts. So the notes are the same, but the structural system is a little bit different. That's why in this way it is divided and it is made. Yeah, and, and actually, I mean, the presentation and progression of each style is very different, no? Uh, very how each improvise within a structure. And it actually, Padkandaji only mentions 10 thoughts, not 12, no? 12. Uh huh. Oh, 10 tarts. Yes, yes. Ten, yeah. And uh, yeah, so, okay, so the sword is the 12 notes in a scale. 
to have and a lot of obviously yeah, you mentioned right. also last time with the introduction of shrutis the 22 shrutis which is kind of uh, assigned to indian classical music and could you explain a little bit more about the microtones shrutis yes shrutis there have 22 shrutis and it is if you if you uh, there have some mathematics in the shrutis uh, suppose i'm giving you you an example when you uh, you see the our uh, the ecg report that have the graph system so it is like the heart the shrutis are like the graph system the ecg report of our music so uh, on that basis on that mathematical calculations our shrutis are uh, are invented and it is uh, it is documented it's a vast subject but uh, uh, in one word you can say that shrutis are the ornamentation of our music if we don't use which we, we don't have the shrutis belankars it will be more like the straight notes i can give you some example if you want one minute Suppose I'm taking us some sutra notes. Sa re ga ma pa. These are the straight notes. So they have no sutras. If I'm using the ornamentation and using the sutras, it will change. Sa re ga ma pa. So now I'm using the shrutis to make it beautiful. Thank you, great. And I mean, just to have a, an understanding of all shrutis, because with Indian classical music, obviously, it's in written form with the notes. But are the shrutis, can the shrutis be written in, in the notation of Bandish or is it orally taught? No, you, you can't read you know, While doing the general notation of the Bandishas and composition, it, it is difficult to note down. So it's more or less, it's, it's uh, again, it's coming from, uh, from the gharana. The different gharana have the different styles. And according to, to their styles, they are giving the training through the shrutis. Okay, wow, okay, that's good. Okay, so there's, we established that there are 12 notes with 22 shrutis, and these are sung according to, uh, differently according to the garana. It is. Okay, and, and within these 12 notes, then we, f we get the form of the ragas, the thoughts, the parent scale, and then the ragas, different ragas. Can you just explain briefly what a rag is? Rag means a... Uh, like when you, you are making a portrait or an idol that had the structure and after on that structure you can make an idol and uh, then you can get picture so our rock system is a picture on on the structure on that chart on the uh, on that structure and uh, you can say this this way the other way you can say that if Indian classical music is a total subject, then the different ragas are different lessons. Basic, uh, like in mathematics, we have different like permutation combinations, math, um, uh, the other other things. So the ragas are the different subject, different lessons through which we can understand in the Indian music uh, in a better way. We we can present our music. In a better way, and we have uh, we can understand the uh, the notes. So uh, this is the form of the ragas. Okay, and uh, with regards to praband, then was praband sung in a particular rag, or did it have a freedom of being a mixture of rags or not having to be a, a belonging to any rag? The ragas were actually basically we in the in the last lesson last uh, uh, interview I told that uh, basically we did have only three notes sa kamalni and kamalre so uh, there have no 
ragas uh, and later on the ragas were coming after uh, uh, before thousands and thousand uh, thousand year so but the prabandh was coming much uh, far uske bahut pehle se before ha uh. before that so uh, prabandh uh, singing was uh, not actually on the ragas it was it was uh, it was taken uh, the prabandh singing was taken to the raga music later okay okay great um so okay so the 12 notes actually didn't exist until much later because you're saying it started with three notes and then four notes then five and then seven notes became the scale so and um, so i mean raga wasn't introduced it was introduced after prabandh in fact that's what you're saying absolutely okay so i mean that's really interesting in itself <laughs> mm-hmm. and um uh, so basically prabandh is a fixed prabandh band meaning enclosed so it's an enclosed or fixed uh, progressional singing huh? it is so it's very structured so the next structure the next element we have in prabandh after swar is virudh which is the words that are used and virudh actually um is the words that are praising are in praise of the divine no so there has to be those words used in that prabandh Absolutely. can you give an example of uh, any poetry i mean it's there are so many different khals and you know we sing today but um and then what is the poetry constructed of what does it exist of yeah the, we have very until the 14th century when the mogul period started before that we had uh, very importance of the, the lyrics and the um, and the literature in our music because in the vedic time from the vedic time the sanskrit language was and more of the braj bhasha was used in our in our music so uh, uh, and you as you know that uh, indian music is more spiritual so the divinity and the worship uh, mode was always there from the from the start so actually from the uh, after the mogul period the structure was a little bit changed because of the uh, mogul and the, the influences more the tankari more the other nuances came a later what but basically our music is spiritual music through the lyrics through the through the literature through the, uh, the through the treatment of the notes so uh, like i'm giving one example i'm singing one composition <clears throat> you can understand it, it is a very traditional composition in in rag bhatiyar yeah uh ना 
ही है अपना अपना so this is a very traditional composition you can understand the, the language that there is ultimately we don't have any friends which means okay wow. so these type of literature and music and the lyrics are used uh, basically in for, for our music beautiful beautiful composition patiari is one of my favorite ragas also so beautiful composition and great i mean that really explains uh, the poetry side because actually from the mogal period that everything changed now there was a, yes. a vast change in the instrumentations in the vocal styles um and uh, the presentation of all that became more entertainment than spiritual so i mean we're talking of, of at least a thousand years before that so um and then okay so we understand the swar the notes the virud the poetry and the spiritual element of that and then there's the third element is pad now pad is the the measurement of stances because in classical poetry everything is measured so in a way to give an example the way i think we should understand is we have uh, classical compositions in different rhythmic uh, cycles so there are different measurements of the length of of the cycle so some have uh, 10 beats some have 12 beats some 14 16 and so on 7 9 and in the sense in the sense of pad then the length of the measurement of the poetry the stance the verse and could you just give an example of this in two maybe two different bandish in two different time cycles to show the structure of uh, the poetry and how it fits into different time cycles is that right or is yeah, it yeah, it is it's absolutely you you're very very uh, you know more than me <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no yeah you're a very unknowledgeable person pritham ji yeah, um uh, thanks for uh, uh, for the point which is the uh, pad which is a very good uh, portion in our music um which comes along with the tal you know suppose uh, we are singing in uh, in, in the 16th 16th cycle which is tin tal the same composition we can't sing in in 12 beats in our music because when we used to compose or we are singing a composition in 16 beats we can't stretch, stretch it down the vice versa in our music if a composition is made in 12 beats we can't stretch it longer so that is the part actually uh, a particular composition and a particular uh, bandish is set and made on a particular tal mm -hmm. suppose uh, i'm singing uh, a composition uh, in puriya dhanasri it uh, is a traditional composition on tin tal tha din din tha tha din din tha na din din na tha din din the system beats pae le ya jan ka re mohadi jan na jan na baje jan ka re the system beats if we start to sing in 12 beats it will not match so this is the importance of the the division of the tals in the composition vice versa if we are singing uh, a, uh, a composition on 12 beats okay so it will be jag bhag ji sukh pare jag bhag ji sukh pare mero man ba aaye jaaj इंपोर्टेंस इन अवर म्यूजिक Ah oh, no that's a, a very clear example 
because actually the poetry, the length of the poetry would determine which dal the bandish will be set in. Absolutely. Okay, great. Uh, so if we go to the next, which is tanak, now the fourth element of the praband, tanak is the syllables used, norm, tom, which we hear in Rupad a lot, but uh, actually these are very meaningful syllables uh, and not just uh, just made up, no? So can you explain a little bit about Tanakh and uh, these um, syllables? Yeah. Uh, basically, these words are coming from the Arabian music or the Persian music. Uh, like suppose, um, uh, as you know, in Drupad, it is used uh, Nom, Tom, Tana uh, in the in the Alaq portion. But in Khayal, uh, in the Alaq, we maximum we used to sing for two minutes maximum. Tu means you. Tom means your. And uh, Tana means you. So they have all the meanings of these words uh, like like na der der. Der means to give. So some people don't understand that these have the means meaning um, th these words have meaning and they used to compose uh, according to their wish but those people who understand the meaning that uh, they can they can say that it is not rightly written so so they have the uh, the, the compositions and the usage of the uh, of these nom tom tana der tader nader uh, even if we are doing the alap, we are doing the uh, nom tom alap, there should be the bold bond accordingly. That is the training. Okay, so it's not just any syllable you can use in any structure just made up. It's There's a particular it way. It shouldn't be. If, suppose I'm, I'm listening to a person who is doing the bold alap. I can, I can easily understand that whether th this person is trained or not because the person who is trained will sing accordingly. He knows the meaning of that words. The person who is not trained, he will make it up. And we can understand that he is not trained. So they have the meaning, they have the, uh, the proper guidance, and they have the ways to treat those words in our music. Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, I totally understand that it's the same with tabla because there's a, a very structural grammar in, in any language, there's a grammar and anyone who's learned the grammar will be able to portray it in the correct way. And yeah, it's very clear when someone hasn't learned the grammar and just uh, speaking and, and doing without any meaning. Okay, so, yeah, yeah. Very so nice. Nom Tom Tana actually is very, is also structured then. Of course. Okay, and in structure, uh, how would how do we mean structure? Then is it uh, in a, a layer or in in a speed or how is it structured? The, the layer and speed have their own language, their own way. I'm I'm just telling the the words. I'm just explaining that the word should be in the proper way. The division okay. of the words, which we used to say the bold part. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's the actual usage of the syllables in a particular way. It is, it, it should be. <laughs> and okay, so that's the fourth element, Tanak. Part, part is now the, the uh, syllables of percussion. And uh, obviously in those days, it would have been the Pakavaj or Madangam bowl. Da, dum, tete, kete, pata, gina, domakete, all these syllables. And could you give us a little bit more detail of those syllables and how they're yeah. used? Suppose I'm, uh, I'm, I'm singing one composition, then it should be easier for me to, uh, to give sure. the... It's a miyakitori. So these are the words uh, 
we we are using thun thun na ghade na ke tarike ke taag these are the uh, the bowls and the um, of the of tabla and pakwaj we can use in our compositions okay they are the uh, part yeah so actually these syllables uh, it doesn't really matter which taal the bandish or the composition is in it's actually just the structure of the wording that is made up of the syllable so it's not a particular taal these has to fit into no, not a particular taal we have to understand the uh, the lay and the essence of the rag and then accordingly we have to use those uh, those uh, uh, the so, uh, words in our composition so that it uh, it is good okay so that's a yeah so that's part the the uh, percussion syllables and then of course everything has to be tied into a rhythmic cycle the taal so subject yeah <laughs> no um so can you explain a little bit uh, about the taal and how it's used uh, and the different speeds we have which is very also very important part i'm scared in front of you yeah. anyway <laughs> yeah taal you know as as uh, there have lot lots of taals thousands of taals but in our singing we generally we used to sing uh, maximum 10 to 12 taals and uh, what we learned uh, previously when we started learning um, the alankars and other taal sargams uh, apart from the taals we we started our training with a tempo with a beat with a metronome to to make our life suppose in in the single beat in the double beat in quadruple beat in the quadruple beat to make our lay and taal more perfect which makes our taal very suppose uh, i'm i'm uh, i'm giving one example 1 2 3 ga ma da ni sa ni da pa ma ga re sa single then the double is sare ga ma da ni sa ni da pa ma ga re sa then the quadruple will be sare ga ma da ni sa ni da pa ma ga re sa so this is the lay and this lay we are we, uh, we 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 learned how to use in the taal in tin taal in in chap taal in ek taal and uh, so that's it the the, the rhythmic cycle and uh, according to the rhythmic cycle we used to uh, there have some portions like in the vilambit the madhla in the in the drut and uh, ati drut so we uh, on that particular tal on that particular loy we used to sing and uh, we perform okay i'm just thinking um, um with prabandh it doesn't actually say which tals were used Uh, so it'd be interesting to maybe know a little bit more about the taals that existed, uh, you know, um, so sort of pre uh, Drupad, you know, when we have all, all those jab taals and char taals and, and the, the taals that we know. But prior to that, the, um, the taals used in Prabhupada, do we have any idea of what the, the, the maybe, I'll be, yeah, I'll be I have... with the Bakavaj taals, no? Yeah. i have learned from my guru that uh, the practice was uh, was done on that time before thousands of years according to our pulse beat so so uh, as you know the tempo is based on the second now it is based on second second beats 60 120 240 40. but in the previous days it was uh, as you know our heart beat or pulse beat it was made on that way so it was very difficult but uh, but but the, the people who used to sing the classical music the classical music they were very sane person they can understand everything they can feel their body so on that basis the lay and the taal was made wow that's that's the first time i've heard that's really interesting yeah yeah and um we know that so prakavej you know the mardangam in the in the north is in uh, is known as bakavej and in the south is known as mirdangam uh, that it existed you know and at the turn of the um, sort of 2000 years ago 
So there must have been some thals, but as you say, it was set to the pulse rather than a fixed cycle. Mm. Wow, that's really Even nowadays, some of the sadhaks who are, I know some of the people, they, they don't use the, they can understand the rhythm, they, they can understand the pulse, and they, they used to teach according to that rhythm. They don't need the reference note. They can, I have, I have, I'm, I'm out of the out of the way. I'm saying one thing to you. I have seen one one person in the north in the South India who can tune the Tanpura in any scale without any reference note. Mm -hmm. In A, in B, in mm -hmm. C, he can do anything. Mm -hmm. And if you say him that what is uh, what is hundred tempo, he can say it. Mm -hmm. So that is the sadhana. That is the sadhak. So in the ancient days, they used to maintain it, but later on, we have the reference notes and the other things. So we are dependent on that, but mm -hmm. it was there. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I believe there are people who are pitch perfect and, and can work on that, but uh, with the rhythms, I mean, going according to one's own heartbeat or pulse or feeling the atmosphere there within that, gathering must be something very different rather than setting you know a 16 beat cycle or a five beat cycle then your brain works in a totally different mathematical way but if you're going with a total feel element then i'm sure that music would have a different meaning and uh, um, um, i don't know how that would progress because it's it's all to do with the nature of the atmosphere so that's a very different approach that's really interesting so Fantastic. So we have uh, a basic understanding of Swar, the six elements, Swar, Virod, Pad, Tanak, Bart, and Tal. Mm -hmm.